Hello everybody, welcome back to the episode of Friendly Fridays. This week is Horace. Horace? I'll say Horace. Why not? Uh, don't know what the game is about, so let's just start a new game. Actually, we'll have a quick look at the options. Uh, game. Uh, okay, so it's controls, audio. I'll leave that because I can always edit it and post uh, extras. Okay. Well, not many options. Let's start a new game. Never played it, evidently. There we go. If you can hear any sound in the background, that would be my fan. So, because it's quite warm at the moment. Um, so I, I guess, I'm like a robot machine guy, and I get put in a box. Okay, man 2.0. Okay. Some, uh, some claims there. <laughs> Do 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 Cool. I like the music. <laughs> like eight bit versions of like popular song well old songs. <laughs> Are you going to be able to play this now? Looks like it. Do, do, do. Up looks up, down looks down. Okay. One more way. And so, I was born. The first people I remember seeing were the old man, the old lady, and their daughter, Heather. After they'd said hello, the old man powered me down, so he could install some software. I could tell they were nice people. The old man didn't give me a silly voice. r 2 2 Stephen Hawking. <laughs> and nice. the old lady didn't dress me like a clown. Although for Good some to know. reason, Heather really didn't like me. Once I'd had time to get used to walking, the old man asked me to dash from one end of the room to the other. Run! I can jump, I can run. So X is run, A is jump, okay. Speed! <laughs> Next, the old man spent a couple of hours building some wooden platforms. He said he wanted me to jump up them. But I okay. must admit, I was scared. It wasn't until I saw Heather and her mother happily climbing up them that I decided it might be okay. Let's do this. Speed! Oh, wait. Bit squeaky, need a little bit of uh, WD. Oh, there's a crafty gap there. Speed! The Made it. The man then rearranged the platforms. He told me to try to reach the other end of the room without touching the floor. Oh, I said, crafty. The floors made it louder. Oh, yeah. And when I smiled at her, she just frowned and looked away. The old lady arranged some pillows and blankets. She said it was in case I fell, but I think she just wanted it to look more like lava. Fair enough. I 
case you have to run jump. Yeah. Crafty me. I know about run jumping. <laughs> okay. That's a big ass snowflake. <laughs> oh. You just pause cutscenes with A apparently. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of days after those first lessons, the family had a big meal, and I was introduced to everyone else. The professor was the old man's brother. He was very quiet and always seemed to just kind of stare at me. He had lived with the old man for five years. The house was so huge they barely saw each other. He preferred instead to stay in his room, leaving everything up to his butler, Mr. Deck. As he insisted everyone call him, although the professor always called him Anton. For a while, he called me the yellow bastard. But the old man made him stop as he thought it sounded racist. Mr. Silton was the old man's driver. Before he worked here he'd gotten in with some bad people and was the driver in a post office robbery, although it all went wrong for some reason. <laughs> Mr. Silton showed me a video of his band. I'm sure some people must like it, but I just found it terrifying. Then there was Alice. She was the cook. She was a nice old lady. When she was younger she had been a TV chef. Then, years later she had a small part in Coronation Street. Mr. Silton said, before she worked for the old man, Alice was quite a hoarder. She kept old newspapers and bicycles. And something about a poo in a shoebox. The next morning, the old man gathered everyone together, to show them what I was capable of. What else does he do? asked Mr. Silton. The old man smiled. He can help around the house. Could he help me with my newspaper collecting? asked Alice. I'm not sure that's a good idea, said the old lady, but he can do all sorts of jobs. Yeah, said Mr. Silton, shove a stick up his ass and he can do Dex's job. Now, now, said the old man, we have company, pointing to some important looking people. Two large men, both called Gary, set up what the old man referred to as lasers. He said again, I should try to get from one end of the room to the other, but I shouldn't be worried, as I had a special chip which meant no matter how damaged I was, I couldn't die. He said it was like infinite lies in a video game. But when he realized I didn't understand, he said he would explain another time. Okay, that was a long cutscene. I can tell this is made in uh, for like British audience because of like Coronation Street and like Robin Post Office and stuff like that. Um, but there's lasers. Bzzzt. Okay, so it just respawns me. Okay, those lasers last a long time. Okay. Okay. Ah! <laughs> Flee! Oh no! <laughs> okay. Bzzzt. Made it! Everybody clapped, except the important looking men. Not exactly a cold calculated killer, is it? said the man in black. The man in grey laughed. What kind of artificial intelligence was that? he asked. Move right, unless there's something in the way. Okay okay, said the old man. He turned to me and whispered, they're going to make it quite a bit tougher. But I'm sure you'll be fine. 
Also, uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to get any copyright strikes on this because of the music. Okay! Uh. Go! No! <laughs> They go at different timings. Okay. Up I go. Oh, damn it. No. <sighs> I didn't run and jump. <gasps> no! My head. My bald spot. I can't jump all the way up there. <laughs> I thought I could possibly cheese the level. But it's a no. Go, 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 go. Go, go. Go, 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 go. Made it? The garage yes. <laughs> then rearranged the room one last time. The old man smiled. Now, now, there's no need to look so glum, he said. I'm still happy with everything you've done today. So this time, I was determined to do him proud. Okay. What be this then? No, I don't want to hit my head on that, that's for sure. Yep, hold it down and hit your head. So I'm just somehow... There you go. Run and jump, but release. Okay. Ah, laser! Hmm, okay. Uh, use those squeaky legs. Made it. Ah! <laughs> God damn it. No! <laughs> So close. It handles pretty well, actually. It's just me being bad at the moment. That's uh, laying the side down, but it does feel nice and smooth. No. Oh, I did make it. That was close. Am I there yet? Oh, no, I'm not. Okay. Tap. Yeah. Tap harder. Yeah. The old man's friends actually seemed quite happy when I made it through. Achievement for top of the class. Said the man in black. Oh, it's no yeah. Three bot 3000, but you can almost see the fire in its eyes. A couple okay. of days later, the old lady said she had a surprise for me. My own room. <gasps> she also wanted to play me some music. I wasn't sure after what Mr. Silton had shown me. Looks like Squat C3PO likes this. <laughs> As if music wasn't amazing enough, the old lady then bought me a television set. I couldn't believe what I saw. I watched everything I could. Comedy, drama, horror, sci-fi, anything anyone wanted to watch I would happily watch with them. Then one day, the old man set up a small box, he plugged some cables into the television, and said, this is what I meant, when I said video games. <laughs> I played games at every chance I could. I took on everyone. I was unstoppable. 
I had enjoyed music, film, and television. But to me, video games really were the highest art form. Table tennis for two. Extra star. Let's do this. Ba -ba -ba. Wait, do you have to swing? No, you don't have to swing. I just missed it. Yeah! Oh, oh, oh. Yeah! Oh. Yeah! Match point for me. Straight up there. Oh, you speedy. Yes! Oh, yeah. Heather's birthday was a couple of months later. Her mum and dad had bought her a camera and arranged a day up by the sea so that Heather could take some photos. Although I really don't think she wanted any pictures of me. When the old man asked the professor if he wanted to go, he frowned and said, I can't believe you want to spend time with that thing, it could destroy the world. I wasn't sure what he meant, but the old man just smiled and said, that's what you said about the Game Boy. Anton, how about you? I don't think so, said Mr. Deck. The last time I got in that car, Barry crashed us into a branch of Woolworths. Another I British never oh. have gone into Woolworths of my own accord. <laughs> the old man explained that the, shut now anyway, but... the brakes had failed, but Mr. Deck was having none of it. So Mr. Silton drove, and Alice came along for the fresh air. I enjoyed being outside. Although, the old lady kept telling me to be careful of the rickety old walkways. It felt like she was telling me off, but I think she was just concerned. As the old man and I stood on the clifftops, I could see something in the distance. I wasn't sure what it was, so I asked the old man. He said it was a battleship that had sunk in the 1940s. But he looked so sad when he spoke about war. I didn't see what happened. But the metal platform Heather was climbing on had collapsed. She was safe, even if the rocks she was on looked very dangerous. The tide was rising and we didn't know how long the Coast Guard was going to be. So I offered to climb down and get Looks her. like it's a job for the me! The man agreed, but said I should be careful, as Heather doesn't have infinite lives, like I do. Let's go. Coming, Heather. Speed! Ah, oh, no! Damn it! <laughs> hit! 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 Oh no! Speed! Oh, electric! Heather was unconscious, and her leg was up with a voice. So I picked her up as gently as I could. I decided it would be best if I didn't run the rest of the way. So we just have to walk now. Okay. Excuse me, coming through. Okay. Yep. Go down, and now I go. Squeak, squeak. There we are. The ambulance had arrived by the time I had made it back to the cliff top. The medics made sure Heather was okay, and then took her off to hospital. A few days later, 
We all went to see how she was doing. She was fine. But would have to wear the cast for a couple of months. Hey, I only took her almost dying to trust us. Robot saves local girl. Mechanical man to the rescue. Hero, robot, hero bot. Cool. Whoosh. Whoosh. Once Heather got to know me, we became good friends. We enjoyed the same films and TV. She was also annoyingly good at some of my favorite games. <laughs> After a while, she became Youth. very interested in how I worked. Soon she knew as much about me as the old man did, if not more. We spent the next couple of months visiting other countries, as when it came to teaching me things, the old man always liked to pick interesting locations. He had explained the basics of mathematics to me at the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Taught me history in the dead of night, surrounded by mysterious giant stones. Bit of Stonehenge going he on there. Showed me science in action high up in a hot air balloon. This is why I was surprised when the old man took me to a restaurant. It was nice, but it seemed very somber compared to the previous grand locations. He said he just wanted to chat, and this was nice and quiet. Plus, it was his favorite place to eat. We talked about life, the universe. Douglas Adams. Everything, <laughs> really. When I asked him, why were we here? Why did we exist? He just smiled and said, life is like a game, just don't expect to be finished anytime soon. When I looked puzzled, he said, well, everyone should have a purpose. So I asked him, what's my purpose? He thought for a bit, then said, so you want to be a real boy? which just confused me even more. Eventually the old man said, For now, I want you to help clean things around the house. I must have looked unimpressed. As he then said, Okay. I want you to clean. One million things. It didn't sound like the meaning of life. But I suppose you've got to start somewhere. Oof, that's quite a few things. Chapter 2, Learning My Purpose. But what I will do is I'm going to end it there. Usually I do these um, the Trinity Friday day, games. I'll, I'll just pause it. I can't pause it. There you go. Um, usually I do these for the first 20 minutes of a game, so you get the gist. By the look of it, it's going to be a lot of the same. Platforming, cutscenes... Um, British humour. <laughs> uh, it, I actually really enjoyed this first 20 minutes. I may even... No, I've, I've started streaming at the weekends now, so I may even do this on a stream, uh, finish this game off. Um, so there's a link in the description if you want to follow me over there. Um, but yeah, that has been this week. Um, it was. I'm going to call it Horace. Yeah, Horace. I don't know. I don't think they said his name. So I'm going to just go with Horace. Um... Yeah, I really liked. It. I like the the art style's pretty cool though. It's it's standard eight bit, but some of the things like the, some of the humor that is in it, I I <laughs> pretty like, and um, the music as well. There's a couple of songs in there which I recognize to be eight bit versions of other songs. Hopefully, I don't get a copyright strike for them, but the music's pretty good too. Um, and yeah, um, if you liked it, put. A uh, leave the video a like, put a comment down below about what you thought. And if you have any more and more recommendations of what games you want me to play, put those down there as well. If you want to see more, as I said, I do this every Friday, so subscribe and I'll be in your subscription feed. And of course, if you 
want to get notified when I post a video, hit the bell next to subscribe, and I will see you next week. See you later, guys.